All right, hey everybody, it's uh, Chris and Kim. <laughs> we are on day seven already. It'll be the end of a, one week of our physical distancing uh, evening broadcasts here from Wolf Camp and the Conservation College at Blue Sky Farm. First thing I want to do before we dive into what I said we'd do yesterday um, is uh, to encourage everybody to do a PPE drive. That's personal protective equipment drive for your first responders and especially your emergency hospitals in your area. Um, ours is overrun so much um, and so low on PPE that this morning they changed their policy and they're accepting anything. They're accepting um, open boxes of masks, masks and gloves and not just N95 masks but any, any masks, masks paper masks um, yep anything you can come up with maybe there's a few old masks that you have in your shop or um, shed unused. or something and unused, unused obviously clean yeah. um, so they're also taking antiseptic wipes they're also taking Tyvek suits, Tyvek suits if you have any um, personal protective equipment PPE um, as well as gloves so nitro gloves in particular. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, hey Linda, good to see you. <laughs> Today, uh, we're not gonna go into herbal medicine, but I wanna thank you so much for everything you've taught us over the years. Uh, that's Linda Quintana in, from Wonderland Herbs and Teas and Spices in um, Bellingham, Washington, right on Railroad <laughs> Avenue. I have no idea whether you're still open, but obviously you have so much wisdom that you could share with people in mm -hmm. this time. Uh, but we'll get back to some herbal medicine in later broadcasts. Um, the other reminder besides, so what we did was we uh, just put out on Facebook and other social media, nextdoor.com and such, to, uh, that we would go around and pick up from people if they left it on their doorstep. Of course, wash, have them wash their hands before they handle the PPE to get to your hospital and first responders. Um, go around pick it up for people that can't drop it off themselves. And as a matter of fact, it might even be better to pick it up so that when you're bringing it in, to the main entrance of the hospital or their uh, shipping um, loading, dock. loading dock or wherever they prefer to have it. Just call the hospital operator and they'll tell you uh, what they will accept and where to bring it. Um, but if you can go around and gather it from all your neighbors and bring it all at once, that's probably more efficient for them. Uh, all right, so that's one reminder. I really encourage you to do that. Second, it was we're going to try to go pro tomorrow. <laughs> and so we're going to actually <laughs> advertise as classes these um, 6 p.m. Pacific time um, broadcasts that we're going to do. We'll advertise on Meetup and our Facebook page and um, our website and uh, try to keep them down to about 20, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, teaching one skill if possible each day. Tomorrow, uh, because it's going to start raining, the wind's coming in right now, yeah, it's starting is cool. to get cloudy. Um, <laughs> It's going to rain for quite a while, so we're going to go to fire because I think that's through the ages has always helped raise people's spirits. And so tomorrow we'll show you the, the uh, Wolf Camp special way of uh, doing bed, pillow, and blanket fire starting. And then the following day, a bow drill. Uh, fire by friction. Cool. The day after that, the special crisscross method <laughs> of getting fire back going after it has kind of uh, died down to nothing but a coal or two without even having to make much of an effort. A special magical way of doing that and continue on from there. We'll post all the uh, things that we're going to be doing each day as classes. We're also going to try the best we can to keep Wolf Camp staff employed through the summer our administrative staff right now, we have two administrative um, people that are right now are, we don't know whether we should um, keep them employed because we don't know whether summer camp is going to do. Right now, nobody has canceled summer camp, and so hopefully they will uh, will be able to run summer camps, and maybe by then the parents will really want to send their kids <laughs> off to summer camp. Uh, but anyways, we're going to ask for uh, donations to one or two places, either here to Wolf Camp in honor of the classes that we're preparing and going to be delivering at 6 p.m. Pacific each day, and to um, some kind of a health care um, effort for the first responders, the medical professor, fr professionals that are on the front lines right now, putting themselves at risk uh, to take care of people during this uh, pandemic crisis. All right, and this is all to encourage you to go outside. So I wanted to finish up with some of the things that we did yes started with yesterday. I'm going to just show you quickly the um, our uh, which you can go to our website for most of this on our old blog posts, uh, all at Wolf. 
PowerPointCollege.com, but I'm going to just quickly show you our PowerPoint um, for how to prevent getting into emergencies in the wilderness and anytime, actually, uh, including some loss-proofing loss tips, and then um, show you our, for those that weren't able to go to our Saturday workshop this past, uh, yesterday, uh, the remainder of our uh, Wilderness Survival PowerPoint. That's going to be about five minutes. Uh, and then we're going to show you how to make rope. And Kim has some raffi. It's the, one of the largest palms in the world from Madagascar. You can get it at any of the craft stores when they were open. Mm, probably order <laughs> some it on Some of them Amazon. are open. Um, yes, but you can use, we're going to show you uh, tomorrow how to use natural materials that you can find right around uh, your house, potentially. Uh, and our strongest one is Sting and Nettle. will show you how to process that. Kim will be doing that long game fire going tomorrow. And so hopefully we'll be able to do both of those things. Uh, anything we can't get done in about 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to cut off the broadcast and continue it the following day and advertise that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to switch this around to show the other direction. And I'm going to put it up here. Woo! Okay, so this is the order of wilderness survival we went over yesterday. Air, warmth, water, food. It's the law of fours. This is on our blog po uh, post, or we'll just scroll back to the beginning of the wilderness survival category. Um, I mentioned yesterday you want to breathe first. And then for warmth, try to find it. If you can't, make shelter. Do that before you do fire uh, is later toward fire. You also need that to get water within four days and food within four weeks to be able to do these things. Um, the next thing I want to show you to prevent um, getting into situations, of course, is the 10 essentials. We went through those yesterday. And then um, if you ever change your plans or before you go out, always tell somebody where you're going and when you're going to get back. And if you ever change your plans, make sure that person that is your uh, person that you told, you communicate to that to them very clearly who you're going to be with, by the way, how to find you, where you're going to be, you know, where your car is located, etc. Always, no matter where you're going, tell somebody where you're going and when you're going to be back. Um, it's just common courtesy, but it also if you're not back, then people can start looking and or call for help if uh, you're not back. If you ever separate from your party, don't. <laughs> that would be for very exactly. few exceptions. Just don't separate. Um, and yes. you can see the wildebeest here are not separating because that lion is, they're, they're much safer together. Never separate from your party. Now, always lead, never follow. This is... Um, the main risk management uh, thing that we learn in risk management trainings after like a week of training, the really one take home message is uh, just say stop. Don't follow somebody if you have this sort of little gut inkling that maybe it's the leader's not doing the right decision. You have to stop. And the leader, a good leader, will stop and not go ahead until everybody agrees to go. So always, at least in your head, lead. If the leader won't stop, then just always look behind you. Always pay attention where you are. Constant vigilance in order to, at least in your mind, that you're leading and know how to get people back. Now this, any of these situations, you have to just stop and take care of before you continue on. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or thirsty, just stop for 20 minutes. Take care of your hunger. If somebody else is kind of not making good decisions, that's because they're halt. They're probably hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or thirsty. And so just pretend like you are in order to get those type A personality leaders to stop and be like, I just can't go on. I really need something to drink. As soon as they see you drinking, they're going to take a drink, uh, maybe a bite to eat, and they'll start having a clear head you as well. Shade that. It'll show up better. Yeah. So <laughs> awareness. Okay. Well, we're going to have an entire class later uh, this week or month on awareness. So we'll get to that, but that's basically the opposite of being lost, is being aware all the time. Always look behind you, in the city or in the wilderness. The very first moment you feel like you're lost, just stay there. Just stay there. You're probably about 10 feet from where you need to be or, you know, where the path is. Uh, so if you just take a drink of water, bite to eat, uh, shut your eyes for a, a minute, you'll probably realize if you look backwards and open your wide-angle vision that we'll teach you in the awareness class that you're actually 
know how to get back to where you need to be on track, which is usually just a few feet away. Normally people just keep going and then it gets worse and worse and worse. All right, so the rest of this is navigation. That's a whole nother class we'll do later. Um, and here's some natural navigation things that are on our PowerPoint. We'll do those later. And how to prevent errors when you're navigating. We'll go through those. All right, so uh, I'm going to go back to the Wilderness Survival video. For those that weren't able to get to, to the Wilderness Survival class who signed up, um, we, um, we're going to show you how to find a perfect shelter location. That's usually about halfway up a hill. If you're right by water, it's going to be really cold all night long. If you're up at the top of a hill, you're going to be really windy. Halfway up is the warmest place to build your shelter, and you want to look for these things, the five W's. Adequate wood, that's materials put underneath you to build a bed. That's the really main thing. Don't worry about putting something over the top of you the first night other than what you brought, like a plastic bag. Just create a really warm bed underneath you. Insulate underneath you. That's the first thing, and usually the only thing you need the first day. Water, again, be away from it. <laughs> but eventually not too far well, close enough you can to get, get to, to it to if you need to uh, filter some water. Weather, of course, get out of the wind. Um, a wind, um, you, it's obvious if it's stormy which way things are going, but at night, wind always goes downhill because cold air sinks during the day you'll notice wind is blowing up the hill um, wherever it's warming up because warm air rises. Um, you might need the battery. Okay, I'll get yeah. it. And uh, Widowmakers, you always want to look up and make sure nothing's going to fall on you uh, during the middle that of the night. That is a Widowmaker right there that he's sitting on. <laughs> of course, that's a little one Yeah, too. just any branch above that um, might fall on you if it gets shaken out. Wigglies, of course, look for you know bugs and things. And of course, there's like six, seven, eight, nine, ten more W's. Uh, but the kids came up with this one. Watch out for weird people because they're the most dangerous animal out there. All right plastic bag. We'll show you how to use this. This is Peter Kummerfeldt's special orange 5 mil bag. That's the main thing that you need to survive. Um, the only thing that's missing here is a bed to put underneath and behind you uh, to keep you from, because the cold ground is the thing that's going to cool you off the quickest, so you need to have something underneath you in addition to a bag. There's a lean-to. You don't want to do that unless you have several days and a group of people that you need. Debris hut, you don't really want to do that because it takes too much work. Uh, but a critter nest, you do want that. Basically, you just build a nest underneath you, and then you can start building a frame around you to get even more material in there. And then you can put a, the second day maybe a cover over the top of it. It's really hard to get a waterproof cover. All right, so these are more um, things that are in our survival. Day. Yeah, we went through um, water yesterday, so we're going to go through this. Uh, fire, we're going to go through the next three days in these broadcasts. Uh, survival foods, we went through the, some of those last week, but we're going to have a special class just right around our yard. We have all of the top five survival foods, so we'll go do another class on that. Stinging nettle we did the other day. Um, berries when we can. Oh, Kim's going to um, uh, plug in a battery here while I finish this. Here are the top um, foods that we like to teach, but again, this will be another day. And finally, um, we're going to teach you how to make cordage or rope out of natural material. I'm going to turn this back around again. All right. All right, Kimmer, this is your time to shine. My time to shine. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to make this really, really easy. Um, I just took two strands of raffia and they're different colors to make it easier for you to see, tied them together on top. So if you want to make rope, all you need is one long strand of something that, that is usable for rope material, and we'll talk more about natural materials tomorrow. So you grasp your rope or your material someplace near the center, but you never want to grasp it exactly in the center because as you're making your rope, um, if you grasp it in the center, you are going to come to the end of your rope on both sides at the same time. So that's where you would splice in another piece to make it longer. And if your splices are in the same spot, those are the weakest spots on your rope and you don't want those in the same place. So you're going to grasp your material someplace near the center, but not in the center. But for our purposes today, I'm just going to do it right here since I'm showing you what it looks like. So 
Here's your vocabulary. You've got two hands. The hand that you write with, that you use for most things for me, it's my right hand. And then you have the hand that you don't write with. That would be your left hand, or in my case, it's my left hand. So, the right hand is the working hand. The left hand is the holding hand. Those are your pincher fingers. That's what you're going to hold onto your material with. So, um, what I do, take my left hand, my pincher fingers, and I grasp my material someplace near the middle. And let's see, I guess I'm going to backwards. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so anyway, so I start on top. Turn around, so. It's okay, I got it. Um, so I start on top and I take the strand on top and I grasp it about a half of an inch away from where I'm pinching and I start spinning those strands away from me. So up, up, how can I show that? Up and over, away, away. So spin those strands away and so you've got it nice and maybe you should hold it. Yeah. yeah, that's probably easier. But you got to go over my shoulder because I still have to go oh, backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Can you do it that way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -oh. so, I lost it. That's all right. Okay. So anyway, um, so you've got it nice and tightly spun mm -hmm. like that. And once you do, you take that, that spun strand and you bring it toward yourself and you cross it over the other one. And okay. where it crosses, you pinch it with your pincher fingers and then you let that strand go. So you've got the other side of the strand that you've never touched before. You can do the exact same thing. So you grasp that strand and you spin it up and over the mountain away from yourself. And once you've got it spun just a little bit, you bring it toward yourself, cross it over that other strand, and where it crosses, you pinch it and you let that strand go. So you just keep on going back and forth. You spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch, spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch, Spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch, and this is what it's going to look like. Now, note to the wise, those pincher fingers, you don't have to pinch super, super hard so that your fingers blanch white or turn pink or start hurting, because all you're doing is you're holding onto it, because if you let it go, it doesn't want to unspin. Friction is holding it together since you're spinning one way and you're wrapping the other. So don't worry about that and pinch super hard. Just relax your hands so you don't get a hand cramp in it. Okay, show us one more time. Okay, so the other thing I like to do is take the part that I've already done and have it down here under my hand. So here it is one more time. Spin it away. Once you got it spun up just a little bit, bring it toward yourself, wrap it in front where it crosses, pinch it, let it go. Spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch. Spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch. Can you talk about why this isn't historically all our ancestors did this and it's even being done today? Oh, you want me to? Yeah, you talk about <laughs> okay. it. Okay. All right. You back can on you um, keep doing it um, oh, so people okay. can watch? Okay. Great. Okay. Well, even today there are um, towns in Peru that are separated by canyons, and they make rope like this for uh, how many days? Or weeks kind of a festival every year they so take down their bridge each person man woman and child has to make i think it's 40 feet of rope out of their native grasses and then they deliver that rope to the rope maker and it's handed down from generation to generation to this rope maker or this bridge maker excuse me how to do it and then um they completely replace the bridge and then they cut down the old one and this thing is strong enough as you can imagine to walk across they used to be able to bring probably still can probably still do bring horses across on it um and it's just beautiful and you can find it online maybe we can link to it and all your ancestors did this this is way stronger than braiding and uh society of primitive technology tested the strength of reverse wrapping Sorry, versus just wrapping like... things together it's about 10 times stronger because of that friction it's amazing um and uh tomorrow we're going to show you how to process stinging nettle into because that's our strongest natural abundant plant fiber in this area and there are faster ways to do this. Maybe we'll show you some yeah. sneaky faster ways yeah, tomorrow. But for tonight, <laughs> practice this. It'd be too. really cool to see how long of a rope somebody can make tonight if you have something to make it with. All so. right. Well, um, I'm going to finish with the song uh, by, again, another song by Ken Longquist. Can you grab the uh, battery because it fell off yeah. over the porch? And 